My name is Tim Besley. I'm a professor of economics here at the LSE and I'm here with Paul Collier from Oxford University to talk about the IGC and to talk about growth strategy and international strategy more generally in relation to development policy. If you look at a lot of the proposals for uh, successors to the Millennium Development Goals, they will often talk in concrete terms about health or education or sanitation, obviously things that evolve in development, but uh, they, they rarely mention growth as such. Do you think that's, that's the right way to frame the agenda? No, I don't. I think it's a, it's a very passive agenda. People receiving health care, receiving education. What's needed is, is to recognise that people are first and foremost not passive recipients of, of these things. They are active generators of their own income. And the real tragedy of poverty in low-income countries is that people are not in a position to generate a decent income by their own work. That's what has to be tackled. And that is what really the growth agenda is about. It's about empowering ordinary people to be in a position where they're sufficiently productive to have a decent income. That is development as freedom. But let's actually come back to economic empowerment for a minute um, and, and talk about uh, what you think is at the core of effective economic empowerment and, and uh, the kind of growth that can be generated that really empowers individuals. Where do you see that as located and what are the priorities? First and foremost, the, the big endowment of ordinary people in poor countries is their labour. And so the, the main engine of economic empowerment is going to be through the labour market. And so it's making ordinary people productive in their work. Now, for most people, in most prosperous countries, that means wage labour. Because growth, tightening that labour market, creating productive jobs, we know now how that happens. And it happens in large organisations. Why large? Because scale increases productivity. Then the question arises, you said at the end, what, what are the policies um, that are going to deliver that. In IGC we have a, a range of research programs that are trying to focus on particular aspects of this, but what would you outline as the sort of core elements of an effective growth strategy that come out of that notion of, of, of scale and competition and creating uh, um, uh, labour market opportunities? There isn't one magic policy. I mean what Arthur Lewis' vision was, was first and foremost industrialisation. That was the structural transformation. That's one strategy amongst the International Growth Centre countries, Bangladesh is probably the one that's most exemplified that. The textile industry started, what, about 30 years ago, uh, grown like Topsy, it now employs four million, and that is, is really empowering ordinary people and driving down poverty. Urbanisation. That's a, a big, we have a big theme. I know you have a, a big research project as well on urbanization. Where, where does that fit into the, this, this the economic empowerment agenda? First of all, we know that urbanization is fundamental to that process of rising productivity. On average, each time you double the size of a settlement, productivity goes up something in the range sort of four to eight percent. But we also know, just by looking around the world, there is no country which has developed without urbanising. Cities do two things that are vital for poverty reduction. They provide decent places to live because you can provide services much more cheaply and they provide productive places to work. But it's not automatic. The poor countries we work on are only about a third of the way through their urbanisation process and so far it's gone wrong. One of the functions of the IGC is to help governments to get the next two thirds right. People will say, well, if poverty reduction is our goal, then surely the only way to achieve that is by large scale redistribution. Well, it depends where we're looking at. If, if, if you're talking about America, um, I think that is broadly right. If we're talking about Ethiopia, um, it's absolutely ridiculous. You take a low-income country and all that redistribution could achieve is redistributing poverty. 
because the average person is horribly poor. And so in the poor countries that the IGC works on, our agenda first and foremost has to be raising the average. Of course, we want to guard against strategies which raise the average without benefiting ordinary people. That can and does happen. But without raising the average, you're dead in the water. Growth is the process by which ordinary people climb into better incomes. And so the policies which are conducive to that kind of got lost. We were trying to remedy the manifestations of poverty rather than address its causes. Thank you very much, Professor.